Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the 37th week of WeeklyPokerHand.com. Again, this week I'm going over another hand from the $25,000 buy-in Bellagio World Poker Tour main event. And today we have the Jack-7 of Diamonds, which is not that great of a hand. Um, here the player that opens is a tighter player, and this player over here that calls is a loose, aggressive kid that has already been playing quite a few pots, so, you know, probably it's more of a standardish, loose, aggressive player, but you really don't have too much, you don't really know exactly what to expect from him, besides, he's probably going to be crazy. So, um, I like to call in the small blind with Jack-7 of Diamonds, and this is something that I think you only need to do if you're going to play very well post-flop, kind of like last week's episode, where we flopped middle pair and a gut shot on, uh, we had 10-9 we had on a, a queen-10-8 ten, uh, board with three diamonds, that's the spot where poor post-flop players will get in a lot of trouble. But right here, this is another one of these very similar spots where if you're going to get in a lot of trouble, you should just fold pre-flop. But I'm not going to get in a lot of trouble. We're going to play well. So we take the flop four ways, and this time we flop the nuts. I say the nuts. We flop almost the nuts. I think the only play here is to check and let one of these players bet, especially since the pre-flop raiser probably is going to continuation bet with a decent amount of hands, and we also have a spazzy kid behind us who may make a play with a very wide range. So, uh, guy bets 1,500, spazzy kid calls, and now it's back to me, and I like to make it 5,500. In spots like this, you need to think about all of your options. First off, folding is no good. Um, calling, that's certainly an option. What's going to happen on a lot of turn cards? If the turn is a non-diamond, it's probably just going to check through. And if the turn's a diamond, my hand's no longer good. So, that's not really a good result on the turn. If I check raise, say, small to uh, 3,700, anyone with a good diamond is going to call, which is not really what I want. And anyone with something like a set is definitely going to call. And if the guy has something like 10, 9 of clubs, he's always going to fold. So we're not getting real, really any value in that situation. So that's not really a good raise either. We can make it kind of big, like 5,500. Now if we do this, obviously the big diamonds are still getting pretty good implied odds. So they think. It's not like I'm going to pay off a ton of bets if a diamond comes. And so so we're going to keep in the, the diamonds that are probably incorrectly going to call. And also the sets are going to come in as well, which, you know, they may get paid off a little bit if they do hit. Like if the two of clubs comes, it's going to be tough for me to get away from my hand. Also, if our opponent does have something like pocket jacks with no diamond, he may continue as well. So there are quite a few hands they can call 5,500. And then you have to think, what about making it really big, like 9,000? 9, 9, then the only hands that are going to continue are very, very strong, and that's not really what we want whenever we actually don't have the nuts. If I had the nuts here, you could consider a huge raise, but even then, you want to keep in the weaker hands. So a big raise never really makes sense. Uh, that sort of analysis I just did is what you should be doing every hand, and I actually discuss it a lot in uh, this program I've been working on called Instapoker. It's an online... or it's it's a application for an iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch, and basically you can think through all the different thought processes that the professionals do, and they explain why every play is good or bad, so check that out. There are a lot of pros on there, myself, uh, Huck Seed, Antonio Sfondiari, Dan O'Brien, a few other guys. It's a very good program, and it's an excellent training tool. I mean, I learn a lot from it from the other guys, so... If it helps me, I'm, I'm confident it can help everyone. And I have a few hand packs on there where I discuss a lot of my hands. So maybe a little bit of a shameless plug, but check it out. I, I think that it is very beneficial for any poker players. And, you know, I'm not going to send you guys to anything that's that's not a good product. So check that out. Anyways, 5,500 here. I think it's pretty good, pretty standard. The, um, well, the replayer's messing up. Okay, here we go. So we get a turn of the Ace of Spades. And at this point, you have to think about your opponent's calling range on the flop. Only the, the loose, aggressive kid called. The other player folded. So now we're heads up. The pot is 14,000 chips. And right here, if our opponent had the Ace of Diamonds... Well, first off, let's think about his calling range on the flop. It should be pretty much only good diamonds like the Ace of Diamonds, and or possibly the King of Diamonds, and hands that have set uh, outs to a full house, like 9-5 or a set. So against that range, what should we do? 
we definitely need to bet kind of large to not give our opponent fantastic odds. So that is why I bet 11,000 and 14. I think you could also get away with betting a little bit smaller here if you thought your opponent did not have an ace. But right here... I think our opponent could almost certainly have the ace. And some opponents will look at this and think, wow, the ace came. That improved my hand. Now I have a pair. You know, I have top pair to go along. But in reality, what we're looking at is, or if he has an ace here, it doesn't actually change the strength of his hand against my, my range. My range here is either going to be strong draws or sets. And if I have, I'm sorry, strong draws or flushes. If I have a flush, or even a set for that matter, making top pair does nothing for your hand strength. So it's very important if you're in seed eight's position to realize that the ace doesn't actually change anything. It's effectively a blank. And because of that, he should realize that and possibly even consider a fold here. If he does call, he has to wonder how much money he's going to win if a diamond does come. So say say I check and a diamond comes, he's probably not going to be able to win that much money at all. And if he, uh, he does have a set, again, he's not really getting great odds to call. And if a set card comes, I may pay off a bet, but again, that's kind of close. This is a spot where I think we can get away with betting pretty large, and I think that a lot of weaker opponents will call with the ace of diamonds here, thinking that they have a good hand. But this is another spot where you just have to be able to look at your hand and realize that ace of diamonds, four of clubs, is total trash here, even though you have a gut shot, top pair, and the nut flush draw. So don't fall into that trap. Um, and I bet 11,000. You always want to make sure you're making a bet where your opponents make a mistake when they call. And certainly they're making an immediate pot odds error with any hand they call with. But it's not going to be a huge error. You don't want to bet something like 7,000, though, because then you're giving your opponent almost the right price to call. And they're not really making that big of an error to justify a call. So say say they're twenty percent to win here. You want to make sure sure they're getting nowhere near four to one. So right here, our opponent has to put in eleven thousand to win twenty five thousand. So we take eleven divided by twenty five. Actually, plus is eleven. So right here, he needs to win thirty percent of the time to justify a call. And he's not. He's going to win about 20% of the time. So knowing that, he's making a 10% error. If instead he needs to bet 8 to win, say, 36, you see now he's only making a tiny error. And you always want to make, set, yourself, set your opponent up to make a pretty big error. And also right here, in a big tournament, if you know your opponent has a pretty good amount of outs, either any 9, 5, or 2, or any diamond, you don't really mind if he folds. So I go ahead and fire out a bet, and my opponent does fold in this situation. Interestingly enough, if my opponent decided to raise here on the turn, I'm going to be in a pretty tough spot. <laughs> and you have to be prepared and know what you're going to do if your opponent raises. And this is a tricky one where you don't actually have a very easy call if your opponent does raise. Because when he raises, he's representing either like squarely the ace of diamonds or he's representing a bigger flush. And I think that is certainly a line that most players would take with that. They would call the flop to slow play, and then they would call because you're representing something strong, and now maybe they'll raise to try to either induce, you know, to get value. So it's a pretty crappy spot for me if my opponent does decide to raise the turn. But I, I think that very few opponents, especially early in these tournaments, are going to be blasting off their whole stack. So I think you can very confidently fold if you do get raised. Um, I'm not really in the habit of folding big hands, but whenever your opponent almost certainly has a better hand, you just have to get out of the way. All right, if you guys have any questions or comments about this hand, or if you have any other suggestions, please feel free to let me know. This has been Jonathan Little for weeklypokerhand.com. Thanks for watching.